Shumai Palb, howdy everyone, and recently an interesting new low budget lens has found its way all the way from China to my office, the Yongno 50mm f1.8 Mark II. At the moment this Mark II version is just for Canon digital SLR cameras, full frame or APS-C. As usual for a lens for digital SLR cameras, you can also adapt it onto mirrorless cameras with the right adapter. In common with their original copycat 50mm lens, which I reviewed a few years ago, this new edition is obviously a low budget competitor against Canon's 50mm f1.8 lenses, the most recent of which, the Canon 50mm f1.8 STM, is about $120 in the US, or just over £100 in the UK. Well, this new Yongno competitor comes in at $75 or only about £60 in the UK, so a little under two thirds the price, a significant saving if you're on a very tight budget. You all know what a fast aperture 50mm lens does by now, there's a reason they're the most popular prime lenses on the market, they're small and inexpensive, they give you a bright maximum aperture in order to let you shoot in darker conditions and get artistic looking out of focus backgrounds and the 50mm focal length is versatile. On a full frame camera, 50mm is neither a wide angle nor telephoto focal length, it gives you a good emphasis on your subject while still offering some background and enough field of view to get the whole picture in. If you're using a crop sensor APS-C camera, then your pictures will be the full frame equivalent of 75 or 80mm. That's a short telephoto field of view for tighter shots and portrait pictures. The equivalent depth of field in your pictures will be more like f2.8 on a crop sensor camera, still good for some interesting subject isolation. Let's look at the build quality then. It's a nice improvement over Yongno's original 50mm f1.8 lens. They've gone for their own style of body here instead of ripping off Canon's design and it looks a lot nicer as a result. This newer lens is a little fatter than you might expect with a 58mm filter thread, but it feels a lot more solid. There's even a metal lens mount. Out of the box, it has a protective film over the glass elements, don't forget to take those off obviously. There's no weather sealing around the mount though, in fact Yongno are at pains to point out in the manual that you definitely should not get this lens wet, otherwise it may cause unlikely to repair. On this new lens, the focus ring is marked with a distance scale, rather handy. In manual focus mode, it turns quite smoothly, enough to manually focus without too much trouble. The front element does not rotate as you change focus, which is helpful if you're using a polarizing or graduated filter. Autofocus mode is activated with a switch. Do not turn the focus ring while you're in autofocus mode, you might damage the lens's mechanism. Now then, autofocus, here we go. The autofocus is a little slower than other 50mm lenses, including Yongno's original 50mm lens, although the new lens does have a longer focus range to cover. It makes a whirring noise as it goes, but it's definitely quieter than the old version. On my copy of the lens, I needed to make quite a major autofocus micro adjustment on my Canon 6D for it to get my pictures in focus through the viewfinder, plus 12. Once I'd micro adjusted though, it focused consistently, so I was happy. The lens will autofocus accurately if you're shooting in live view mode too, although it'll be a little unsure of itself, sometimes focus hunting. The lens's aperture mechanism has 7 iris blades for smoother out of focus backgrounds when the aperture is topped down. An improvement over the previous model is that this Mark II version can focus down to 35cm, just like Canon's latest 50mm f1.8 STM lens. It won't be mistaken for a macro lens by any means, but that's still really handy for getting closer shots of smaller subjects. It comes with the usual lens caps, but no lens hood. Overall, the lens's build quality is quite nice and it works very well. Just bear in mind that you may need to micro adjust the autofocus on your camera for accurate shots through the viewfinder, 
and not every digital SLR has micro adjustment as a feature, so be warned. Yongno do mention in their publicity that the lens's firmware can be upgraded through your camera somehow. Don't ask me how you do that though, there's nothing in the lens's manual about it. Alright, image quality. The original version of this Yongno optic was a little softer than Canon's own brand 50mm f1.8 lens, so I wonder how this new version performs. We'll start on a full frame camera, my old 20 megapixel Canon 6D. In the middle of the image, at f1.8, the lens is pretty nice and sharp. Not perfect, but pretty good. Contrast is a little low at f1.8, and there's a slight red colour tint to your images. Over in the corners, contrast and resolution are fairly soft. Stop down to f2.8 for a punchier image up there, but still hardly a sharp one. The middle of the image is really sharp now, though. Stop down again to f4 for about the same in the middle, but now the corners of the image are decently sharp. They're excellent at f5.6, f8, and f11. f16 and f22 are softer though, due to the effect of diffraction. Overall, the lens performs about the same as its predecessor, sharp in the middle, and sharp in the corners from about f4. Bear in mind though, the more expensive Canon version of this lens is sharp in its corners from only f2.8, a much wider aperture, so the Yongno optics still lag behind Canon's more expensive options. Now then, I tried mounting the lens onto my Sony a7R II for a high resolution full frame test at 42 megapixels. The aperture mechanism wouldn't work properly with my adapter though, it would only stop down the aperture just after I'd taken a picture. Still, here's a test picture at f1.8 for you all, on my 42 megapixel camera. In the middle of the image, at f1.8, there's still a respectable amount of sharpness, although contrast is still a little low. The corners, well there you go, there are the corners, not great. I wish I could have stopped down the lens's aperture for more test pictures there, sorry everyone. Finally, APS-C. A lot of people watching this review will be using APS-C cameras, as they cost a lot less than full frame cameras, and this is obviously a budget lens, so let's see how it performs, adapted onto a 24 megapixel crop sensor camera, my Canon EOS M3. At f1.8, the lens is a little soft in the middle of the image, and some colour fringing is visible. The corners of the image are really soft. At f2.8, they're still very soft, but contrast is greatly improved. The middle of the image looks a lot better though. Stop the lens down to f4 for a sudden leap in image quality. The middle of the image looks fantastic now. The corners are a bit sharper too. They're sharper again at f5.6 and f8, the lens's optical sweet spot. If you stop down the lens to f11, f16, or even f22, then diffraction really begins to kick in, and the image looks a lot softer. So, on an APS-C camera, it's not a great performance really, although the lens can yield sharp results from about f4, and best results between f5.6 and f8. Again, the Canon 50mm f1.8 will be sharper here. Alright, let's look at distortion and vignetting on a full frame camera. They're completely average for this type of lens, we see just a little barrel distortion, and at f1.8 we also see pretty dark corners. Stop down to f2.8 or f4, and those corners brighten up again. As I mentioned before, this lens can focus down to quite a nice 35cm. At f1.8, close-up image quality is just a little softer than at normal distances. Stop down to f2.8 or f4 for sharp close-up image quality. Let's see how this lens works against bright lights. The answer is not well. We see huge amounts of flaring and loss of contrast. This is another area where Canon's lenses fare much better. Finally, bokeh. This lens can give you nicely out of focus backgrounds, how do those backgrounds actually look? In my experience, most 50mm lenses have slightly nervous looking bokeh, but this Yongno lens looks just a little smoother than usual. 
backgrounds melt away relatively well with just a little highlighting on bright points of light. Well, overall, the Yongno 50mm f1.8 Mark II is a nice little improvement over its predecessor. Its image quality isn't any sharper, as far as I can tell, unfortunately, although it handles flaring and bright lights a little better. The build quality is just a lot nicer and tougher, and the close focusing distance is a great new feature too. Its parameters compete with a Canon 50mm f1.8 STM. The Canon lens is sharper, a little smaller, and has a far, far better autofocus system. The Canon, it's just a much better lens. However, the new Yongno is still able to get you the same kind of lovely 50mm f1.8 images with just a bit less sharpness and contrast, and it costs far less than Canon's latest option. So, as usual in camera lens land, you get what you pay for. You pay your money, you make your choice.